our house, amen. Our leader, our shepherd. Amen, amen, amen. Join me in welcoming, give God honor and glory for none other than Dr. Deron Hepburn. Give the Lord a hand of praise. How many be glad to be here? Amen. I don't believe you. How many be glad to be here? Amen. amen. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we cover this service under the blood of Jesus tonight. We thank you for your Holy Spirit being in our midst. Lead us and guide us into all truth. We cover every person under your blood. Thank you for grace and mercy, God. Thank you for the word, God, that gives us light, gives us understanding. Thank you for this Bible study, God. We bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go around, greet somebody, give them an elbow high five. Let them know you're glad to see them. Elbow high five, elbow high five. Elbow high five. Elbow high five. Then you may be seated, elbow high five. Amen. God is good. Elbow high five, elbow high five. You may be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord. How many of you glad to be here? Amen. It's good. It's good to have Pastor Lockhart back home, y'all. Clap your hands for him. <laughs> How many of you appreciate him? Yeah. Amen. Of course, I'm surprised tonight. Jason told me his wife was coming, but I didn't know he was coming because he's always working. It's so good to have Jason and Chanel in the house, y'all. Clap your hands for them being here. Make them feel at home. Anything with real estate, anything with a house, Building a house, buying a house, that is the man you want to see. Only one person. Build what I said? That's the, or selling. Anything regards to real estate, that's the man you want to see. He'll help you with that. Amen? It's their daughter that was in that terrible accident with, along with their son. But how many of you know God came through y'all and she doesn't even smell like smoke? <laughs> Miracle. So we're going to be hearing from them. I asked him, I said, can you share the testimony on television? And he said, yes, he can. And, and so we're waiting until she gets 100% recovered. But you got to hear about that. It, it was a complete miracle. How many of you believe that God still works miracles? I'll just give you a small part of it. That's just a small part of it. I know they'll tell the rest. I may tell some of it wrong. But that night of the, the day of the accident, she was using skates in the house. Skates in the house. And Jason had happened to ask his son to park the car. And he was going to park the car. And she saw him leaving. And she jumped in the car with the skates. But the accident was so bad, if she didn't have the skates on, her entire feet would have been crushed. Only my left side heard that. So what's the chances of wearing skates? I think it was the only time she wore the skates. Only time she ever wore the skates in the home. And they had just bought the skates. And she wasn't skating with the skates outside. She was skating with the skates in the house and happened to have the skates on. How many of you know God went ahead of them? Y'all, yeah. I tell you, it's a powerful story. You got to hear it. You got to hear it to believe it. But we know God is a keeper. Amen? amen. God is a keeper. This young lady, y'all, has been coming to church just like, amen, and just been coming on the side of Latanya. She's just been coming and just smiling every time she come. Amen. I wanted to stand. Let's give her a jump minute. Make her feel at home, y'all. She is just a sweetheart. I don't know her, but she just been. Is that right? She has been coming in, and she's a part of the family, y'all. Go in your Bibles with me tonight to 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Tonight is Bible study. And on Bible study, what do we get to do? Only the front row. But the questions have to pertain to what is being asked in the service. It can be, you can't ask me, why does a brown cow eat green grass and produce white milk? The reason why you can't ask me that is that's not what I'm teaching on. So whatever I teach, whatever I teach on is what the questions have to pertain to. It's also good, too, to have, amen, this young lady, the mother who, who had the daughter that passed in our services. She, Karen, she has not missed a service, y'all. She's been coming so faithfully.
and I got wind that the daughter's body was released, y'all. Y'all clap your hands for that. The daughter's body was released. For those who are here, a few weeks ago, we, her, we met her just a few weeks ago. Her daughter was murdered and was carrying twins. And she heard about the ministry. She came to the ministry and we adopt her as our daughter. Yes. We adopt her and we were able to raise a small bit of funds to help with the burial. But now I think that things are coming together. And I think the funeral is scheduled for February the 18th. How many of you know it's good to be able to have a church, a local church to support you? And that's what we have done. We've taken and supported her. It's always good to be good to people because you never know what will happen to you in life. I wish I had somebody in here. None of us are exempt of tragedy. Is that right? None of us, hey, Pastor Kokoff, is exempt from tragedy. And would, so it's good to be kind to people because when you never know when you may need the same thing extended to you, the same type of kindness, right? I wanted to stand because people wouldn't let us stand, y'all. So she's been stand with us. She's still, she's been with us. And let's, she's getting stronger by the day, y'all. Clap your hands, all y'all. Three people, wrap your arms around her. Let her know we're here for. That's right. Cedric said, I'm getting some of that love. That's right, Cedric. Another thing I want to say too, yeah, she lost her daughter. Another thing I want to say too, that the day that she came to service, we had a, 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 two young ladies came from Charisma for the first time, Sunday, I think, for the first time they came about a week ago on a Sunday, and I got wind that the, one of the ladies that came, how many, how many of you remember the lady that I danced with in the front of the church? Okay, only plumber. When I called, she was going lower, lower with me and higher, higher. That Sunday morning, yeah, she was here. She was, that's the first time she had had a death of her daughter. I think died in a car accident. And so they were, she was able to, she said she knew God had her to be here that Sunday because she was able to go and identify with that young lady. So she said she knew she was in the right place at the right time. And she was so blessed from the service. Now they're talking about wanting to put me in charisma, y'all. <laughs> Amen. I don't mind that. That's right. Charisma is one of is the largest. Touch somebody say the largest Christian magazine in the world. The largest Christian magazine. And they were here. You never know who's in your midst. They said they came to this service and they sent such love, y'all. Say they can't wait to be back. Isn't that good, y'all? Such love, man. So we thank God for that. First Samuel chapter 10. The anointing, y'all, is, 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 is you need to understand that you can get the anointing by being around anointed people. It's important for you to understand that if you're around the right people, you can glean from the people you're around. You can glean. Somebody say glean from the people you're around. So that means the anointing that is on their life because you're associated with them it can also fall on your life. Now that can go flip mode. That means if you're around the wrong people, that means what's on them can also draw on you too. So you, will, am I talking right, y'all? Yes. So you won't be around the right people so the anointing that is on their life can rest on you. So it's important for you to understand who you, who you are around. And we also need to understand that it's good to be in good company. How many of you heard that? It's good to be in good company with the right people, with the right mindset, people that you can grow, people that you can learn from. And no one in this room should want to be by themselves. God did not make you to be by yourself. Only one person heard that. God made us to be in, thank you for being in fellowship. The Bible says two are better than one. Is that truth? Two are better than one. It said a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. And the Bible also teaches us that whatever two of you on earth touch and agree on believing or asking for anything, it shall be done. So you got to be in agreement with the right people around you. Somebody say the right people. Well, there's a man in the Bible by the name of Saul. He was, he was unable to prophesy. He, he was unable to prophesy, but he found himself in the company of prophets. He found him. He, he didn't have the gift of prophecy, but he found himself in the company of prophets. And I'm going to show you tonight that we can glean from who we're around and the anointing that is on their life can fall on you. That's why you got to ask yourselves when you grow in God or not growing in God, when you begin to, to, to excel in God, you got to ask yourself, who are you around? Are the company you're keeping people who are provoking you to go higher or are they provoking you to go back? You could tell somebody say he's talking right. 
So I don't care how much they're your best friend and how much you want to have in common. What you want to have in common with people the, mo the most is spiritual things. Amen. Say why, Bishop? Amen. Because spiritual things are eternal things. Amen. So you want your company and the people that you be around be, uh, be people of sp who are like mind. They're, they want to grow in the spirit. They want the things of the spirit. They believe in the gifts of the spirit. If you're around people who don't provoke you, they could cause you to shut down the gifts that you have. Take it cause you to make you feel well. It's not necessary. How many of you know it is necessary? That's why God has given to the given gifts in the body of Christ. Because those gifts, uh -huh, help, I'm helping somebody. Those gifts that built up, they edify, they encourage. So it's good to have gifts in the body of Christ. Am I making sense, everybody? Because some everybody don't talk, and sometimes you got to discern what people are going through and the gifts of the spirit will show you this person is dealing with that or this person is is going through this and if you have that gift on the inside of you you're able to help that person or encourage them a right word at the right time can change a life forever is that right let's go we're in first samuel chapter 9 chapter 10 first samuel chapter 10 we're going to begin reading from verse 9 the bible says and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from samuel God gave him another heart. Who gave him another heart? And all these signs came that day, came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, the Bible says, a company of prophets. A company of who? A company of prophets. That means there was a, a company means that there was more than one. There was a few of them. There was a lot of them. A company of prophets met him and the spirit of God came upon him. And what did he begin to do? He began to prophesy because he was in the company of prophets. So that means when you are in the company of someone and they are growing in the things of God, it will provoke you to grow. Look at somebody and say, but you got to be in the right company. A lot of us wondering why we're not growing, why we're not being provoked to spiritual things. Because the people who you're around may not be people who are interested in spiritual things. So that they're provoking you in the things of God. You will want to be around people. What's on them, that is a good thing. What's on them that is manifesting gifts that will come on your life. So you got to say to yourself, God, I want to grow in you. God, I want to increase in you. And one of the ways that I'm going to grow and increase in you is making sure that in my circle is the right people. People who talk the same, people who walk the same, people who believe the same. Saul was not a prophet, but because he found himself in the company of prophets, he began to what? He began to prophesy, and, and, and because he was in that atmosphere, so the same spirit that was on them. That he, now, I want you to plan it in every area of your life. If I'm around successful people, what will I come and do? If I'm around people that, that are educated, what will that want to do? That would make me want to provoke me to even get better. So a lot of times you may not have that on your, you may say, well, Bishop, it's not my desire to get better. I don't feel like getting better, but I'm even know it's okay. It may not be your desire, but get around people that are moving. Good, I hear you, God. Get around people that are provoked. Get around people that you see going higher. And it will cause you to want to go higher. Somebody said to me, I had this young man come to me. He said, he said, man, things are not changing in my life. He said, I'm not growing in the things of God. I say, who is your company? I say, who are the people that you're hanging around? I say, if you're around people who are not challenging you to go higher, then you won't go higher. So how many of you know he had to change his company? So you got to begin to ask yourself where you are in your life, who's in your circle? Good preaching. Who's in your Facebook? The people you Google every day, the people on your phone every day that you go to, do they provoke you to go higher? Do they provoke you to want more? Because if you stay around the same people doing the same thing, you can get the same results. But if I'm around people that are moving and they're shaking and they're changing and they're reaching for more, it won't, you even won't be comfortable being the same because you're not going to watch people achieve and get more and you'll be the only one left out. Am I making sense to anybody in here? So what causes you to change is the atmosphere. Somebody say atmosphere. So if you want to change, you got to get in the right atmosphere. So you got to ask yourself today, what atmosphere am I in? Why am I coming off to press? Why, I hear you, God. Why do when I go to a certain place, I feel like, like, like all of a sudden things happen to me that I, I wasn't thinking before, I get angry? Because you may be in the wrong atmosphere. So, Bishop, what if I'm in that atmosphere? Then you got to ask God, God, help me by your spirit to change the atmosphere. So, how many of you know we have the power of God to change atmosphere? Saul's atmosphere, good preaching, was changed because of the company that he was in. So you and I need to know because of the power of God, we have the ability to change the atmosphere. So what will affect us, we can affect. 
Somebody say, I got power. Because the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. But what we don't do enough is we don't understand that I don't have to allow the situation to change me, whoever's watching tonight. I got the power through God to change the situation. So rather than me come down to people level, they could come up higher to my level. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in me. If you believe that, clap your hands. So he began to what? Prophesy. One of the things that God told his disciple to do is he told him, he said on the day of Pentecost, he wanted them to wait. Wait on what? Wait on his spirit. And when they waited on his spirit and they began to tarry and begin to pray corporately in one accord, the spirit of God rests upon them. And they begin to speak with other tongues. What did they begin to do? So if you go to a place that's dry, what's going to happen to you? If you go to a place that's filled, what's going to happen to you? So what's happening to you right now may not just be a result of you. It may be where you go and who you're around. If you go around people that are always complaining, what you going to become? You go around people and say things ain't changing because that's all you're hearing. So negativity breeds negativity. Am I teaching right? Death breeds death and life breeds life. That's why anytime you get somebody to pray for you or you're sick, you want the right atmosphere set around you. You don't want somebody who coming to pray and say, oh, you poor thing, you're going to die. Am I preaching right? You want the atmosphere set, the atmosphere of healing. Listen, first of all, do you believe in healing? So if you come in to pray for me, I want us to touch and agree that whatever you're praying for, it could be done. But I don't want you to come in here and say it happened to my mama and my daddy and they only had two months to live. I don't need you to set that atmosphere over me. I need you to come and set an atmosphere of agreement that I will come up off of this bed, that God is still a miracle. Somebody shout amen. amen. So the question tonight that I want you to ask yourself is who are you around? Are you around doubt doubters? Are you around people that are telling you that things can't change? Even, how many of you know you could feel a certain way, but getting around the wrong people could, could, could change your way of thinking? You could be feeling good and, and get around somebody and all of a sudden they'd be like, boy, I had a bad day. And then they put, begin to pour all of that on you and if you don't guard your spirit before you leave, be like, man, how come I feeling depressed? So what's on them falls on you. But you have to say, God, I thank you that by your spirit that what's on me, I want to be able to affect atmosphere. If people are heavy, if people are burdened, that I'm able to destroy those yokes. Yes, I hear you, God. Another thing I hear, you know, the Holy Spirit just said or reminded me of is that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, the first thing that spirit does, it goes through dry places trying to find rest. That demon tries to find a place to rest. And when that demon can't rest, what it does? It come back to that house that was left and say, let me see if it's filled. Let me see how it kept the house. And when it comes back and they find that the house wasn't kept, it calls seven more demons. And am I talking right? Somebody clap your hand and give God a praise. Clap your hand. Set the right atmosphere. Even going into certain neighborhoods could change your attitude. You could tell when you go into certain neighborhoods, the atmosphere has just changed. All of a sudden, you get angry and feel like, I want to fight. Wonder, why did that come from? That came because the atmosphere changed. Am I preaching anybody in here? Then you get in a certain, have you gone, ever gone, to, you could even tell when you go in a different atmosphere in a restaurant. You could tell, I can't act a certain way up in here. Certain restaurants, you got to check yourself. You got to make sure the, uh, the, the way you're dressed is the right, because you're in a different you're in a different atmosphere. So that means that atmosphere goes everywhere you go. So my spirit, I hear you, God. Your spiritual life could be because who are you around? If you're around people that are lukewarm, if you, I hear you, God. If you're around people that are, are, are cold and you wonder why I, I, am I not growing? Because of the company you are keeping. He was in the company of prophets, so he began to prophesy. So ask yourself, who's your circle? And then you will know where your spiritual life is. And you don't need a, a, a five or ten people in your circle. You need one right person in your circle that believe that they want to go higher, believe that they want more from God, and what's on them could rub on you. So you got to understand, I won't be in the right company. Somebody say amen. amen. The right company makes all the difference in your life. And the wrong company can also make the difference in your life. And some people you don't want to bring into your home. 
Am I talking right? Let me tell you why. Because they could disrupt your atmosphere. Spirit attached, not just possess people, but it attaches itself to people. Oh, that's good. Not just possession, but oppression. So people could be oppressed by a spirit. And when they bring that around you, I remember this young lady when I was in college, she had a spirit of suicide all over her. And I could see the spirit of depression on her. So much so that when I was talking to her, she almost looked like an empty shell. An empty shell. And, and, and her family kept wanting ministry to be around her. So they brought ministers around her. But how many of you know she needed constant ministry around her? So when people left, they left. But then when they, the parents were there, they were not in the spiritual place to give her what she really needed. And then eventually she put a gun in her mouth and blew her entire face off. That atmosphere of suicide took her right out. The wrong atmosphere can bring oppression. I hear you. The wrong atmosphere could set you on the wrong course and cause you to miss God. The wrong atmosphere can bring the wrong mindset of defeat. The wrong atmosphere could make you feel that like you can't break certain things. You got to get around people that speak life, not speaking death. So you could even hear by what people are speaking to you, be like, you know what? I can't be around this. Because if I'm around this, I'm opening my, I hear you, God. I'm opening myself, whoever I'm talking to. Do you know some things that you fight with, it isn't because you're dealing with it personally. It could be because of the people you're around that is affecting you. I'm going to say that again. I think I went over your head. If you, all of a sudden you begin to lust, I wonder, where's this lust coming from? It could be because you're around a bunch of people that are dealing with the spirit of lust. If you get angry and wonder, why am I angry? Because you could be around people that are dealing with anger and that spirit is trying to penetrate you. That's why you got to cover yourself when you go into a certain atmosphere. Am I preaching to anybody? What do you mean cover yourself? You got to say, God, I plead. Let me, let me be specific. You got to say, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, over my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus right now. Even as I go in here, I plead the blood of Jesus. Why the blood of Jesus? Because it brings protection. Clap your hand if you understand what I'm saying tonight. So atmosphere could determine your growth. Atmosphere can determine how, how much of the gifts of the spirit you believe, whether you believe it's right or wrong. There are people who are in churches right now, maybe some of the most gifted seers and, and interpreters of dreams and visions that people that we are yet to know. But how many of you know they go to a church that don't believe in gifts? Some of them say, well, you ate too much pizza. I'm a, or you seeing things they downplay it and they'll make you think well you need to take pills and when the person may really be a seer so they got to be in an atmosphere where their gift is developed and not where their gift is killed that's good stuff a lot of people don't know that they're gifted that's why the right atmosphere is important because people can make you think you out of your mind you see in demons demons are not real but we know demons are real Am I talking to anybody in here? But if you're in the wrong atmosphere, people will tell you that demonic powers are not real. They'll tell you, you ate too much, you're seeing things, you need to go to the psych, and they put you on a pill. And before you know it, you didn't take so many pills, you're addicted to it. Be like, where did this happen? Because you opened the door, you were in the wrong atmosphere where people didn't able, were able to help your gift, they destroyed it. So people's gifts are suppressed. Am I preaching right? Because they are in the wrong atmosphere so tonight you got to say God put me around the right people and not just God put me around it but you could examine if people are challenging you you know who you're around you know who's provoking you to move high in the things of God you know who provoking you to gossip not the church you know who provoking you to keep your mind on natural things and look at circumstances and not the things of God. Or you know around people who will help you think higher and come up higher. So you got to examine who is in my circle and why do you feel the way you feel. Some people will provoke you not to stay the same. Some people will provoke you to take your prayer life to the next level. But if you're not around people who are praying, if, you, if they don't pray, you ain't going to pray. Oh, our father will be a, 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 all that you say. But if you're around people that, that are praying, it'll, man, if they're praying like that, I could pray. And what some of us do is we like to be comfortable. What we like to do? We ain't want to be around nobody who can provoke, provoke us. We want to stay where it's safe. That's them spiritual things for them and not for us. If God opened you up the spiritual things, it's because he wants you to have more. 
and God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth so a part of God's character is gifts God wants us to be able to prophesy God wants us to be able to see and have insight and discern the gifts of the spirit to be a way of life in our lives but if you're not around those people how could the gifts of God be stirred up you want to be around people that will stir up the gift within you runners hang around runners good preaching basketball players hang around basketball players tennis players hang around tennis players and the more they hang around greatness or play against people who beat them is the better they want to become they can't always play against people that beat them then their gift will never go higher you want to be around people that will that, that will provoke you to come to higher ground so when Saul began to get around those prophets the Bible said the anointing came upon him and he began to prophesy so somebody said Bishop how will I get gifted how will I know the things of God more get around people that are gifted get I, am I preaching to anybody in here get around people that are going want to go deeper and not afraid get around people who are taking steps of faith and that will provoke your faith it will provoke you not to stay in the same place especially when you recognize it works when you see it working for them be like man if it works for them it could work for me am I making sense to anybody in here so get around the right people and then watch God begin to shift you watch God begin to open doors for you and, and, and get around people who are doing better than you get around people who are smarter than you somebody say amen Get around people that know more than you. Get around people who dress a little higher than you. Because if, what it will do is provoke you. But if you stay the same, you'll never be provoked. And the thing about us, most of us, we love to stay in our comfort zone. Tell somebody, time to get out of your comfort zone. And that has to do with the company you keep. What it has to do with? Only five of y'all. This tight, but it's right. Who are you around? That will affect your thinking. Who are you around? That will affect what comes out of your mouth, the things you say every day. That will affect your dreams. Who are you around? That will affect how you believe in God, how you trust in God, whether you move. One of the things somebody said to me recently, they said, I love to be around you. They said, when I'm around you, things happen. <laughs> they said, when I'm around you, open doors open for me. So that means they say when they're not around me, they don't see these results. But when they're around me, they be like, Bishop, I see things happen when I'm around you. Because they glean from that. I hear you, God. You glean from that anointing. So there's something that happens when we come in the right company. Mm, it didn't happen when they were by themselves. Hakeem, they hear me. When Saul was by himself, he was not prophesying until he got in the right company. So your, I hear you God, your level of going higher determines by the people you're around. Your level of being provoked to more spiritual things in God, it comes by the company that you're around. Who you're listening to, what you watch, what you intake in your spirit. Somebody say two are better than one. Say it again, say two are better than one. And he began to prophesy because he was in the company of prophets. Elijah recognized in order for him to get a double portion of the anointing, he had to get in the company of Elijah. It was not as very good, not by himself, in his company. And anytime Elijah told him to stay, he said, no way. He said, where you go, I go. And when he told him to stay, he said, no way again. He said, where you go? He understood in order for me to get this anointing, I got to be in your company. Y'all hear what I just said? Only Quinn heard that. He recognized in order for me to get this anointing, I need to be in your company. Not that he didn't know how to call on God himself, but he understood that there was a man that had a portion that he needed. And in order for him to get that, he had to be in the right company. In order for you to get what God has for you, you got to be in the right company. You got to be in the right atmosphere. And then he said to him, yes, Lord. The prophet Elijah said, if you see me when I'm taken up, he finally said, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of your anointing. Of what? Five of yours. He said, I want a double portion of what's on your life. He said, but the only way you could get that is you got to see when, I, when this mantle fall. He had to be in the right place 
at the right time with the right person to be able to receive that double anointing. And what I want you to hear this today. It didn't just fall from God. It fell from the right company. So when people are like, me and God, me and God, me and God, it cannot just be you and God. That is one place, yes, it has to be you and God. But God also used more than just you. He uses what? Company, he uses people for that anointing to come. Am I preaching right? So if you get that revelation tonight, it's not going to happen by myself. God doesn't want you to do it by yourself. It was not meant for you to be by yourself. You're not going to find that. Scripture teaches that two are better than one. So you got to get out that mindset, I could do this on my own. It, you were not designed to do it on your own. And God will put people around you that will have more than you to provoke you to come higher. Am I preaching right? He will put people around you to provoke you to step up your game. Not for you to get jealous. Only one person. Why they prophesying and I'm prophesying? If you're around them, if you clean enough, you could prophesy too. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Why they could heal and I can't heal. If you're around them, you could heal too. You're just kidding to me, Catherine Kuhlman and Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn said his anointing that fell upon him came from, the, from being under Catherine Kuhlman's anointing. He said he watched her, whoever I'm talking to, and he gleaned. He didn't watch her and get jealous. Thank you for being here. He didn't watch her and get intimidated. We got to understand that the anointing we can glean, it means to rub off. You can rub off what's on somebody else's life, can rub off on you. If success on them, what's on them could rub off on you. If favor is on them, tell somebody, I want some of that. I ain't got to be jealous of it. Oh, clap your hand is in the room. I ain't got to be intimidated by it. How many of you know if God got me around it, he want me to get some of it? Yeah. Only Mother Diana, I hear that. If he had me around, he had me around and be like, wow, look at them. We got to, if it's on them, it could rest on me. So what I'm there to do is I'm there to glean. I'm there to learn. I'm there to, oh God, if you could do it for them, let it manifest in my life. But what we do is we get so caught up in the person not knowing that God is saying what's on them could rest on you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Somebody clap your hand and give God a praise. If they discern it, I can walk in that discernment. If they, oh, that's good. If they love it, I can walk in that love. If they enjoy, I can walk in that joy. What's on them could rub on me. And Benny and caught wind of that. He understood she was walking in a healing anointed. And he said, I, I want this gift to flow in my life. And he had one of the largest healing ministries in the world. Because he was around somebody that walked in healing. Again, who are you around? That's the question of the hour. That's what the Holy Spirit wants us to understand. You're set in the atmosphere by the people you're around. You're set in the atmosphere by the people you call every day, by the, what, what, what you go to your Facebook, your emails, the people you minister, and then you wonder why you take on certain things. You've taken on certain things because of the people you're around. You know, they say you are what you... Only three of you. Let's try it again. You are what you... You eat a lot of chocolate, how many of you know you're in trouble? You eat a lot of ice cream, how many of you know you're in trouble? You love to eat a greasy food, how many of you know you're in trouble? You around a bunch of people with no faith, how many of you know you're in trouble? <laughs> you around people who are doing wrong, how many of you know you're in trouble? Just a matter of time, you may not be stealing, but you can cover up for the steal. <laughs> you become the company who you're around. So ask yourself, God, Am I not increasing because who am I around? Anytime I go up, are the people I'm around trying to pull me down? And how are they pulling me down? People can pull you down subtly and you don't even know. What do you think you're trying to do? I tried that before and it never worked. But what didn't work for you doesn't mean it's not going to work for me. If I'm in the right company, you should say to me, it might not work for you, for me, but it could work for you. But if you're the right company, you're not trying to kill my dream, you're trying to build my dream. Could preach in. I'm not, am I preaching anybody? I'm not just trying to build my dream. You're trying to invest in my dream. So don't watch what people say. Watch what people. So the right atmosphere won't just tell you, I want to, uh, I wish you the best. The right atmosphere can help you to bring the best to pass. The right atmosphere will invest in your dreams. You know you're around the right company, not by what they say, by what they, I'll say it again. You know you're around the right company, not by what they say, what they 
And you got to watch the company that comes to you after you arrive. That's good teaching right there. You got to watch the people who want to come to you after you become successful. Where were you before I was successful? You got to be with people who said, I'm going to ride with you because I believe you will be successful. I see where God's taking you and I'm willing to help you get there. Not who won't come on board after you get there. Am I helping anybody? People want to come after the fact. How many of you know I want you to go with me through the journey because you saw where God was taking me? Clap your hand and give God a praise, somebody in this room. Examine tonight the people you're around. My wife came from a Buddhist background. Fong didn't know anything about speaking in tongues and the things of the spirit, prophesying dreams. In the right company, it began to provoke her to change. Very good. She didn't know nothing about the, the things of the spirit because she gleaned from my life. She saw the operation of the spirit. She saw spiritual warfare. She, saw, she began to understand that demons are real. She wasn't just thinking a demon was a dead ant. You all hear what I'm saying? Because again, that because of a Buddhist religion, they pray to dead ancestors. So she might have been thinking who came in her room was an old uncle and entreat him to come. Come, come uncle, sit down. Was that an uncle? Five of y'all. Was that an uncle that came in? What was that? A demon. How many of you know demons know how to take form? But if you don't understand that demons know how to take form, you would welcome you think this is it. My great aunt. Come auntie. What, a demon coming right here making you think, yeah, I am your auntie. I am your dead uncle. Just to finish, take you, but found because of being around the anointing, Hakeem, of being around the right people, she understands the same dead auntie, that's a demon you're entertaining. And then she was able to minister that to her family and say, my, tell her grandmother, grandmother, what we thought all, all our lives and what we were taught from our religion were, were, were family members were demons. And it brought ministry. Why? Because that atmosphere opened her eyes. She was in the wrong atmosphere, making her feel this was family. Good preaching. So the wrong atmosphere can blind you. The wrong atmosphere will make you think that witchcraft is okay. It's a way of life. It's a part of our heritage. Just to finish and trap you. The right atmosphere will tell you, you don't need no witchcraft. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Somebody say hallelujah. There's a lot of people into certain things because this is what, they're in the wrong atmosphere. They're not in another atmosphere that will teach them truth. They're in an the atmosphere will tell them it's okay. They can help you know about spiritual things while they dig a ditch for you. Because that's all that witchcraft is, which you plan for somebody else. The devil is really digging, and he's using little subtle truths to trap you. And somebody in here is dealing with witchcraft, dealing with somebody in witchcraft. If I've gone to that, it's in the room. And it's not in the room because God's trying to hurt you. It's in the room to tell you that it needs to be broken. You don't need to go to no psychic. You don't need to go to no witchcraft. You got to go to the spirit of God, to the word of God, and let God reveal it, not a, a witch or a warlock to give you truth. That's the wrong atmosphere. Clap your hand and give God praise, y'all. Let me tell you how you know that's the wrong atmosphere. Somebody say it's in the room. I'm not asking you. That's how come you'll be tormented and can't sleep. Because those spirits follow you. So you're wondering why you can't sleep. You're wondering why you're tormented. You're wondering why th a sickness comes in the home. Because of something you said the wrong atmosphere and that thing follows you. Demons attach. Say that. Demons say it again. It, they don't just possess. You got to hear. Demons attach. Mm. Even so that's why you don't bring certain objects in your home. Every gift somebody gives you, you don't take into your house. Am I talking right? Yeah. Say why, Bishop? Because demons attached. So when you think you're taking a figurine or you think you're taking a gift inside your house to put there, that means that demons need entryways. So that atmosphere of demonic power was open through you bringing that gift. Says so a certain atmosphere, yes, that you set into your house that caused that open door. Somebody say amen. amen. Those are things we need to understand. Holy Spirit, show me what atmosphere I'm setting in my house. Am I setting the right atmosphere? Am I bringing the right people in my life? Am I bringing the right people in my space? Why am I depressed? Why am I feeling a certain way? Why do I feel like, uh, uh, like, the, like there's a, a burden on me? Because somebody else's burden you might have taken up because of who you were around. So suddenly a heaviness comes on you. Somebody says he's preaching right. 
And you don't know where that heaviness come from because of who you were around. Get around people that know how to cast off heaviness. Not people who carry heaviness. Because again, it will attach, say this, it will attach itself to me. And you wonder, where did it come from? It came because of the company you were around. Being around the right company, in the right atmosphere, is paramount to your growth. It's paramount to the gifts of God stirring in your life. I went to a church, y'all, that believe in speaking in tongues. Thank God. I went to a church that didn't believe in speaking in tongues before, but I knew the difference. I saw power, and I didn't see power. Am I making sense to anybody? So I, it, I saw life and then I saw death. Nobody had to tell me speaking in tongues wasn't real. No one, I didn't have to go over here and say it was real or not real. I know what I experienced for myself in that atmosphere. So even if it wasn't real, it provoked me to want to know more. Does that make sense? So what the atmosphere will do, it will provoke you to seek God more. Some happens it will provoke you, be like, you know what, it's not real, and then give up. When God's trying to stir you up. Am I helping you? Am I helping somebody tonight? Say this, say, God has more for me. Get around the right people. You don't have to say that part. Say, God wants me to go higher. Get around the right people. Some of you in here that wants to see the gifts of the God operate in your life, get around people that pray in tongues. You ain't going to be around them too long and don't begin to pray in tongues yourself. I'm telling you. Get around people that are prophesying. Get around people that are laying hands on the sick. You'll be, someone gets sick, you before you even know it, you're laying hands and don't even know about it. It just will be, hap so it'll happen automatically. Amen. Just like being in an atmosphere of music. A lot of times when you go to a club, you don't even know you're tapping your foot. Music playing, you even know. As safe as we are, some music that go on, we just rocking with it. I wish I had somebody in here. And ain't no Jesus loves you. It's a song we even know we rock in. Now the Holy Spirit brings us to our senses before we just rock into the beat. Why? Because of the atmosphere. So the Holy Spirit, you know you shouldn't be rocking. Did you hear them words? What are you listening to? What are you taking in your spirit? So the Holy Spirit helps guide us through those times where we're taking in what we shouldn't be taking in. Who are you around? What atmosphere do they set for you on a daily basis? What is the atmosphere when you get in your car? What is the first thing you plug on? And the whole church goes quiet. Before you go to bed, what is the atmosphere that you play before you go to bed? You wonder why your dreams are the way you, the dreams that you are. Even, can I say this? Even certain horror movies, horror movies. What you doing watching Freddy Nightmare? I love horror movies. Well, I scare to you. What are you opening the door to? Uh, it's about five people in here. You like Freddy. <laughs> Living dead, all these walking dead. And most of these movies today, all they're talking about is dead people. I wish I had somebody in here. The walking dead and zombies, and they are the number one movies. The walking dead, the living dead, and it's just feeding our spirit, trying to set an atmosphere of death. Then we wonder, why do we go to bed Having tormented dreams. Why are children tormented? Because of what atmosphere we allow in the home. Touch somebody say, God, the atmosphere. God, yes. uh, they don't believe you. Touch somebody else say, God, the atmosphere. God, yes. Paul was in the atmosphere of prophets and what he did. Father, your Saul was in the atmosphere of prophets and what he did. Prophesy. You won't prophesy, get in the right atmosphere. You won't be on fire, get around some fire up people. Amen. You want to evangelize? Get around some what? Get around some evangelists. Because what's on them? Go rub off on you. You want to be quiet? Stay around quiet people. <laughs> like you. <laughs> Stay around quiet people. You want to start to talk? Get around some people that's talking. You have, <laughs> am I talking right? You want to be a lover, you got to get around lovers. You want to come out of your shell, you got to get around people who are out of their shell. It all determines on what you want. Provoke, let the atmosphere be provoked. You want to be successful, get around successful people. You determine that by who you around. Let's stand on our feet. Did I help anybody tonight? Did I clap your hand and give God praise? Get. <laughs>
Come on, clap your hand and give God a praise. I have a lady, y'all. She may be watching. She is Hindu. And she, I know she's coming to church, y'all. She came into church today, pure Hindu. She's, guess what? Who's she hanging around? Five of y'all. Who's she hanging around? She hanging around me. So the first place we went to, we went to lunch. We went to lunch at the Cheesecake Factory. And she said, I'm Hindu. I said, I'm Christian. <laughs> what is she? And what am I? She's in my atmosphere. I'm not in hers. You get a little. So she, she, she came today. She came. First, we went to Cheesecake Factory. Guess where she came to today? To church. And I had some pictures at the altar. So I wanted her to see the picture of our future church. So I said, I have the pictures of the altar. Let me get it. She said, altar? She said, we have altars too in Hindu. She said, we create altars. And we got flowers. I said, but my altar is a little different than your altar. <laughs> I said, my altar is different. I see some religions, they have many gods. I said, in our faith, we believe that there's one true God. And she said, hmm, Interesting. <laughs> And so I called Tisha and JB. I said, come meet her. I said, and she said to me, she said, they're so sweet. How many of you know she's coming to church soon? Because yeah. what I'm doing is I'm getting her in the atmosphere. So I called Tisha and JB for a reason. Because I wanted her to be in their atmosphere. I wanted her to see the kind of atmosphere she was in. Does that make sense? Because the more she's comfortable in this atmosphere, guess what? The more she going to want. So Tisha came in the office. So Tisha say. Are you coming to church Sunday? I say, Tisha, not yet. <laughs> I, in the, I said it in front of her. I say, not yet, Tisha. What was I trying to do? I'm working the atmosphere. I'm make, working the atmosphere so when she comes, she's comfortable. Because she won't think about religion. The love is what's going to lead her. Five of you Clap your hand if you believe that. The right atmosphere, who are you around? You got that. Somebody's clapping. And you know what I said? What that lady do, everyone in this room need to know, you have the ability to change your atmosphere. It's just that you allow, you allow yourself to go in other people's atmosphere rather than you change the atmosphere. You let people pull you into what their depression. You let people pull you into their sadness. You let people pull you into how they feel rather than you pull them into what is truth. I'm pulling it into the life. So I know, and she said, she said, I like you, and I don't even know why. How many of you know I know why? It's because I'm setting the right atmosphere. And then when she came to the office too, I wish Sharika was here. I had some baskets in my office. I blessed her with a basket. And she said, wow. How many of you know I'm just loving her to Jesus? <laughs> setting the right. Setting the right. You are what you, five years, you are what you? You are what you, who you hang around with. You are who you hang around with. So tonight you want to examine where you are is not just because of you. It's who you're around. Where you are is not just because of, man, I feel like this and this is all I accomplish. You got to get uncomfortable where you are because you want more. That's why every now and again you have to go shopping in different places than what you used to. Because if you don't go in other places in which you used to, it will cause you to stay at one level. Am I preaching anybody? I'm glad you got to get around things that will provoke you. You cannot just go shopping at the magic mall. Say amen. amen. Let me ask you a question. I want you to be true. How many of you in here have never been to Louis Vuitton? Raise your hands. Never been into Louis Vuitton. You have to go in. Do you have to have Louis Vuitton money to go in it? Why you want going to Louis? It will provoke you to know there's more. You know why we don't go in there? Be like, man, I can't afford it. And then you know, they say, but I don't know if I'll ever want to go in there. I can't afford it. I may not be what I think I am, but what I think I am. I'll say it again. I may not be what I think I am, but what I think I am. Even if you can't afford it, you need to know that I have to change my thinking to be able to afford more. Oh, if you hear me today, take a step. I have a question for you. If I think small, what will happen? If I think small, what will happen? 
The back row didn't answer me. The young lady on the side of Jeff didn't say nothing. I need some response in the house. If I think small, I will what? If I think great, I will become what? Great. I may not be what I think I am, but what I think I am. To be great, you got to be around greatness. Yeah. And let me say this to you. If you're great by yourself, God will always draw you to great talk. Did you hear what I just said? If you're great by yourself, he will always draw you to great talk. Say why? Whoever that was for. Because he takes us from glory to glory to glory. So God had never designed anyone in here to be great by themselves. That's not the design of God. The design of God is for you to be in the company of greatness. I hear you, God. I hear the Lord say not just to be in the company, but also to, to provoke other people to greatness. You're not great until you could provoke others. Ah, that was good stuff right there. So it's not just you being great. Your greatness should provoke others. If you hear me today, take a step. It should be able to come, Shadrach, to provoke others to greatness. Lift your hands high. Father, tonight, we thank you for being in the right atmosphere. Say amen. amen. I wish Stacy was here tonight. Stacy has finished law school, y'all. Clap your hand and give God a praise for that. Come here, Jemiah. Come here, Jemiah. Jemiah, we were coming to church tonight. Jemiah said to me, she said, Jemiah was taking this test, y'all. It was crucial to her staying in college. If she didn't pass this test, she would have failed and had to go home. So it was crucial to her staying in college. She had to take this test. So she took it the first time. She failed. Failed by how many points, Jemiah? How many points, Jemiah? One point. She failed it by one point. This test will go back. So she took it again. Guess what she did? Failed. <laughs> well, she did it. She took it again and she failed. She was in the right atmosphere. Guess what the right atmosphere tell her? You better pass that test. <laughs> she ran in the right atmosphere. How many of you know she took it again and she passed that test? Now, Jemiah is going to school to be a doctor. See, the wrong atmosphere could look good on the outside, but tell you, why don't you change your subject? You got that? Rather than challenge you that you can do well to pass it, it could make you dumb down. The right atmosphere will tell you, you got what it takes to do better than that. And she's on her way to be a doctor. I hear, you know what I heard those words? That's why it's key to be around the right people. Because when you're in the right atmosphere, even when you want to quit, the people will tell you, keep going. So when you can't encourage yourself, you will have the right people around you to encourage you. Oh, I, you know the scripture for that? The scriptures say, if two fall into, if you fall into a pit, who will be there to be able to pick you up? That's why two are better than. That's why two are better than. So if you buy yourself, if you fall in the pit, there's nobody there to pick you up. You need to have people in your life that understands you are greater than where you are. You are more than what they see. That God has more for you and want to take you higher. That will provoke the gifts of God in you. That will provoke your dreams and tell you that your dreams are not too big. You need to have people to you dreaming too small. Get dreaming for more. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jeremiah. You did so good. I'll pay you later. Raise your hands, y'all. Father, we cover this service tonight under the blood of Yeshua, under the blood of Jesus. Even as Saul was in the company of prophets, put us in the right company, God. Give me your eyes as your hands are raised. The, let me say this. I wish Quinn was here. Thank you, Quinn. The gentleman who is from Charisma, y'all hands ain't raised, y'all under arrest. Y'all so disobedient. The gentleman who I talked about, the couple who came from Charisma, they went and they, the pastor that came is who invited them to come to church Sunday. Well, they went and they told the president of Charisma how good church was. 
Who they told? The right atmosphere, Mother Diana. Y'all ain't hear what I said. So guess who called me today? Guess who wants to meet with me tomorrow? The president of Charisma. Not the two ladies, the president. Atmosphere. The president of Charisma say, Dr. Hepburn, I thank God that Pastor so-and-so introduced us, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. He said, today is my birthday, so I can't communicate with you today. And I said, that's okay. Happy birthday. But I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you got that. Guess what? The atmosphere said that. The atmosphere said that. You got to be around people who will provoke you to get better. Not people who provoke you to stay the same. Tonight, ask yourself an honest question. Are the people who are in my life, in my circle, provoking me to want more of God first? Because if we get more of God, everything else will fall into place. It's the spiritual that matters first. Are the people in my life provoking me to want more from God, to seek Him more? Or are they provoking me just, or they're not provoking me at all towards the things of God? If they're not provoking you towards the things of God, then you got to check your atmosphere because they should be provoking, be provoking you to get better. Amen? Amen? Today, that same pastor that introduced me to Charisma had a Zoom meeting with me with his entire staff. Child, am I telling the truth? His entire staff, they call in California a Zoom meeting. He said, I saw things in Orlando that I want you to teach my people. One of the people that was in his church is a professional lawyer. The lawyer called me and said, you know what I do? I sell properties. <laughs> he said, I am a lawyer and I sell properties. He said, do you need my help selling some properties? <laughs> I said, I'll get back with you. <laughs> Y'all get that one later. You got to be around the right people and not people provoking you to go higher or to stay the same. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you tonight for the right atmosphere. Not being around people that help us to stay the same. Let me say this to you. Know, I so admire this young lady too that keeps coming. The spirit has no color. Don't let no one ever tell you belong in a black church or a white church. You belong where the Spirit of God is. Whoever believes that, take a step forward. Don't let no one ever... That's how people get robbed. That's how people get robbed. They think atmosphere is color. Atmosphere is not color. That's why we could not get caught up in Black Lives Matter. You'll get that one later. We got to get caught up in that the Lord is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in not color in spirit and in truth that was a little that's the eyes closed so y'all don't get mad at me you go home and drive and think about it color will make you miss i said to jason not that jason and chanel i don't believe i close i said to them not that color matters i just was letting them know we were just talking do you know the day that the car flipped over and their daughter was pinned to the ground their daughter was pinned under the car. The car was on top of her, stopping her breathing. Do you know it was a white fireman that ran out the house and lift the car with a wrench off of their daughter? Life will throw you some blows. That's why we got to be careful with fight we get in. Y'all don't like me, man. At that time, it wouldn't have been matter if he was white, black, Indian, Chinese, Puerto Rico. My daughter's life was on the line. Oh, God, we give you praise. Eyes closed. Hand raised. You don't know who can be a blessing to you. You don't know who can be a blessing to you. And that atmosphere won't always look like you. Good preaching. That atmosphere could cause you to get angry and be, oh, hate the white man, hate the black man. Okay. Hate him until a car is on your daughter pinned. Yeah. 
Father, we give you praise tonight for who you are. And we thank you, God, for the gifts that are in this room. And Lord, tonight, let us all examine who we're around. Listen, I got to get around that man in California. He knew the president of charisma. Sorry to tell you all, I didn't know him. I didn't know him until he introduced me to him. And then he got to be around me because I got something he needs. That's why he wanted to introduce me to the president of charisma. Atmosphere help, man. You got to be around the right people who will provoke you to go higher. Touch somebody real quick. Say, provoke me. Provoke. Say, please provoke me. If they don't provoke you, we'll stay the same. You need people to provoke you. Father, we humble ourselves tonight and we thank you, God, for putting us in the right circles. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for putting us around the right people who can cause us to prophesy. Who provoke the gifts out of us. Who don't let us die with greatness in us. People who are great who provoke us to go higher. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for loving us so much that you didn't leave us the same. So we humble ourselves tonight and we repent for what the sins we've committed consciously and unconsciously. Knowing, no, somebody didn't know what that means. Known and unknown. Is that simple enough? We repent for those sins. We ask tonight for clean hands. And we ask for a pure heart. Lord, we love being friends with people. We love being cool with people. But God, tonight show us that everybody that is meant to be cool is not to, not to take us to the next level. And we have to know where to draw the line with what we call friendships. Oh, man, that's for somebody in here. We got to know where to draw the line. I hear you. Of what we call family members. Some family members don't want to change. And if you be around them, they will cause you to be the same. You have to know where to draw the line. That's for somebody in the room. You can't go over every Sunday. And they got their drinking and their cigar. Or they smoking their weed. And you going over every... Some Sundays you got to not go. If you keep going every Sunday, you can get a contact high sooner or later. You can't go all the time. You got to know where to draw the line because of the atmosphere they're setting. So God, tonight, give us wisdom. In Jesus' name, give us knowledge and understanding. Somebody clap your hand and give God a praise if I help you tonight. Clap your hand and give God a praise. You may be seated. Let's get ready to give our best to the Lord tonight. So our best seed. Get an envelope in your hand. Get ready to sow your best seed. What type of ground is Jump Ministries? Tonight, when you leave, you examine who you're around. Examine your Facebook friends. Examine your Instagram friends. All the phone numbers in your book, examine. Who's the first number you call every day? The fast ends tonight. I know you're all happy. You could clap your hand and give God a praise. So you can go back to eating normal food. Your chicken you could eat tonight. Your ribs you could eat tonight. Midnight. What time? Midnight. You can go back eating your breads, your white sugar. Midnight. What time? Not 11.09. Midnight, Tuesday. I see some of y'all staying up till mid. That clock can be up. A lot of y'all can be in your kitchen at midnight tonight. Say so y'all just getting a little bit, a little bit in. I see y'all. I think these days went so fast. I think these days went so fast. How many of you survive your fast? Raise your hands. Raise them high, raise them high. Be proud of that, man. That's good. I'm proud of you. Be proud of that. Y'all raising it like halfway. That's 23 days with no meat, no breads, no sugars. 
no coffee, no chocolates. Anybody like sweets besides me? Somebody brought me a luggage full of chocolate from England. A luggage full of chocolate. How many of you know I can dive in them chocolate tonight? No, I mean tomorrow. Not tonight. A luggage full of all brands of ch fresh chocolate from England. I couldn't touch them, but I could bite a little piece tomorrow. Luggage. So we start, we, we, I'm, I want to applaud you on that. Watch for miracles to happen. Some miracles happen during the fast and miracles will happen for the next few weeks to months. Yo, watch them, watch them. Stacy, come. Tell them when you get sworn in. Give Bed the mic and tell them about your swearing in. Tell them what happened with your swearing in. I will be sworn in at 9 o'clock a.m. on Friday. On Friday, February 3rd. the glory God you know I was so when you're um, when you're when you're in law school and you pass the bar you're already a lawyer but you have to get licensed in the state of Florida because the bar is like a brotherhood they say but it's an organization money but um so to get sworn in you become a, a part of the Florida bar which means you can practice in the state of Florida so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be getting sworn in like how you, it's like just like how you get married or something, you know. Um, I'm before getting, a judge. Yes, I go in before a judge, put my hand on the Bible and take the oath of the attorney to become attorney Mohan. <laughs> pardon me, pardon me, but I'm excited. I'm excited, okay? I am excited. Listen, I thank God. I really do. You know, I was talking to... If I could just say this, I was talking to um, Minister Toya, and you know, Minister Toya is very deep, but I really appreciate her because, you know, I was trying to postpone it a little bit because I wanted to get myself together. That's why I'm running around tonight. But she, but I knew it was probably s supposed to be done on Friday because the fast just ended, but she told me February 3rd, which is two plus three is five, and that's favor, and then it's two, three, 2023. So I know it's the right day. I know it's supposed to be happening. I know it's symbolic for the ministry. So many people have, my family have reached out to me and told me they want to pursue their dreams now, and I know this is a testimony that is going to give God glory, that nothing is impossible with Christ. Attorney Mohan, clap your hands, y'all. Friday, I'll be there. Those who want to go and be there, that's swearing in. But I'll be there dancing like it's me who getting sworn in. And we'll be there soon. That'll be Friday at 9 o'clock. Amen? Let's stand on our feet, y'all. Jason and Chanel, so good to have y'all tonight. So good to have y'all. They're a beautiful couple, y'all. Y'all see their house. It'll blow you out the water. Miss Carolyn, good to see you tonight. If you would like to give tonight but have nothing to give, come to the front. If you would like to give but have nothing to give, come to the front. I think Jason and Janelle, those have a 20 bedroom house. That's how big the house is. It's just that big. It looked like a 20, it's huge. They have a huge home, very successful family, beautiful home. You saw the house? No, this is a new house. This, it was bigger than that. Bigger than that, and they have a very successful home. I told them, I said, we can have a big old party when they finish decorating. Who invited you tonight? I love your spirit. It's such a good to have you. Such a pleasure. Y'all clap your hands. So y'all give them something to give. Somebody give them something to give. Don't be seated till somebody put something in your hands to give. Don't be seated till somebody put something in your hands to give. 
Don't be seated. They're going to give you something in your hand. Don't be seated till somebody puts something in your hands to give. Very good. Don't be seated till somebody puts something in your hand to give. Don't be seated till somebody puts something in your hand. Wait, they coming. They coming. We've been doing this enough. Somebody coming. Don't be seated till somebody puts something in your hand to give. Amen. Is God good? This young lady was so proud of her. She been pressing her way, boy. She lost her daughter, but she gained a family. Clap your hands for that. She lost her daughter, but she gained a family. Oh, y'all could clap better than that. The Jump family. She'll never forget us as long as she lives. Amen? She'll never forget us. We'll never forget us. Father, we give you praise and honor. That's right, Denise and, and Jerome, they move. Y'all pray for them. We thank you for this seed tonight. Y'all, Takia also too just had a great event. She had a successful, come in the front, Takia, let them see you. Come in the front. She had a great event. It was a modeling event for kids and adults. Design. And she did a phenomenal job. One of her designers was seven years old. One of her children designers, am I saying that right, Takiya? Was seven years old that goes to her school. Teaching kids seven years old how to sew and make clothes. How many of you know they remember that for the rest of their life? Oh, y'all ain't clapping, but I, I thank God for that. These kids could be doing anything, learning to sew and learning how to design at an early age. I think there's not enough money in the world that could pay for that. Because they're going to remember that forever. Amen? Point your hands up here. Miss Carolyn, you look like you're ready to live. You look so ex You look fresh, Miss Carolyn. She look like she's ready to live. She like, Miss Carolyn, I'm back, Bishop. I ain't dying no time soon. You hear what I say? Punch your hands at your seed. Father, honor every seed. Honor Quinn. Quinn also ministered, Anna came, y'all, behind the camera. They ministered to that family that came, the doctor, pastor and his wife, that wants to put us out in the best magazine in the world. They were so blessed, they went home and sent Quinn a big old package and inv invited Quinn and her came to their home in California. Tell them they could come anytime because they were so blessed from Kim. So now they got an invitation to go to California. I think they're trying to take my people. But I know they, they won't, they, my people be like, you know, I got to go back home, amen. They'll have a hard time taking Quinn in a cave, amen. amen. But yeah, Father, we give you praise for this. We thank you that we don't give to get. That's not our motivation, but we are so blessed. You have been good to us. Somebody say, God has been good to us. You have been good to us. And Father, everything, you, you are the best bank in the world. Only three people. Anybody who believe that, take a step. You got the greatest protection plan in the world. Your bank account, God, it never goes in overdraft. It never goes in bankruptcy. Your bank account only goes into interest. Not just natural interest, eternal interest. Oh, I wish I had. God, this is the best. Heaven is the best economy on the planet. Only Pastor Ellen. Heaven is the best economy on the planet. God, where else could we go with a $5 offering and get $5,000 back? Where could we go with a $300 offering and get $3 million back? Where can we go with a $1,000 offering and get thousands back? Only in your economy. Where could we go and give a seed and our heat children are protected? Oh, that's so good. Because of us. Listen, every eye closed. I can't tell you all the times eyes closed. I, I, almost, I, I don't want to cry. Jason has walked. Jason doesn't come. He hasn't been here in a while. A long while. But what you all don't know, 
is every so often Jason would come and sow a seed of a thousand of two thousand three hundred he'll drop the cash and he gone he's quicker than flash God in y'all but how many of you know those seed could have protected his daughter y'all yes. ain't hear what I said those seeds could have been the seed ain't none of y'all hear what I just said those seeds could have been the seed that protected his daughter oh y'all can give me one day jump your giving is never in vain Woody might have thought he was doing me a favor he didn't know was actually protecting his daughter in the future God knows the future who knows the future your money is going into your future oh jump when you sow in the kingdom of heaven your money goes into your future because God knows what he knows your future father every five dollar oh there's an anointing in here every ten that's right plumber every ten dollar every three hundred and seventy dollars every thousand dollars we thank you for how you protected and how you protected has God protected anyone besides me I said has he protected anyone besides me Jerome Woo. how he protected us from COVID he's protecting us from all these variants that's right how many of you know there ain't no vaccine that's protecting us because people are dying with the vaccine oh I wish I had a church it's God's protection that is protecting us somebody say heaven's protection every eye close every time you come and you give it in any offering always remember that is you could never pay God but we can honor him our offering is our way of honoring him oh miss carolyn it's never in vain and those who gave people something to give don't ever feel like you're losing that counts twice for you you gave a seed and then you gave again that counts twice for your giving and those who got something to give you gave him something to work with because you move out of your seat and got money so that means it still works for you that mother that is burying her daughter whoever hears me she could not get her daughter released until she had almost fifteen thousand dollars her daughter body could not be released from the morgue from the morgue that is how they do it I you could imagine the bodies that never got picked up that's a whole nother sermon her daughter body could not be picked up till she got almost fifteen thousand dollars she kept pressing away to church believing God and the funeral will be on February this month hand raised God is never late he's always on time even if he delayed it for her to get some word in her he delayed it for a purpose Oh, Lashanda, you're the only one who got it. Even if he delayed it for her to sit in somebody's service and get her faith built up, he delayed it for a purpose. But he is never late. Father, we cover this word tonight. God, don't let the word fall on deaf ears or let it find on ground, let it fall on grounds that is fertile, that it will bear fruit a thousand and sixty, a hundredfold. That this ground God will be fertile that no nothing in this life will choke this word that's right that nothing will rob it that will grow and grow and grow now God the food that's prepared but I would be remiss not to thank you for keeping us during this fast thank you for how you have kept us I believe you've honored it I believe you've honored it listen for those who think God don't, didn't honor the fast, I meet with charisma tomorrow. The day after the fast. <laughs> okay. For those in the room who just think, God, they, they just fasted, he didn't honor it. The day after the fast is when I meet with the man. 
who has the biggest magazine company in the Christian magazine company in the world? Where? In the world. Jump Ministries Global Church. Oh, y'all gonna miss, y'all better catch it. The biggest Christian magazine in the world. I have a meeting with tomorrow. Jump Ministries Global Church. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We see you, God. May we never take your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your love, your protection for granted. Somebody blow him a kiss. We kiss you tonight. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Blow him a kiss, blow him a kiss. God, we love you tonight. Honor our fast. Help us to follow you all the days of our lives. Raise your hands high. He's listening. Help us to follow you all the days of our lives. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I don't believe you. Say it again. I still don't believe you. Say it again. The name that is above every other name. Jesus. Somebody say the name. Say the name. Say the name. Grab somebody's neck. Let them know you love them. We're dismissed from this place. Not Get connected with Jump Ministries Global Church. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media networks and never miss out on our bi-monthly men and women's prayer services, our youth events and activities, our global outreach and community celebrations, our competitions, conferences, or even just to get that one word to encourage you. Just visit jumpministries.org. Building people, changing lives, and on the move. Joyously unveiling the master's plan. Discover your faith. Experience Jump Ministries Global Church. So if you go to the wrong people for comfort, they can keep you in your condition. Building people. Changing lives. And on the move. Jump Ministries Global Church.